Ooh, wow. I got some news. So I got a huge offer on the farm. Some corporation wants to buy out my whole farm. Man, I don't know what to do. Let's get to it. So if you don't know, I was having problems getting the credit for my seed this year and everything from the bank. The bank has really been tightening ship. They uh, forced uh, Jake to go bankrupt. Oh man, it's just harder times convincing the bank to loan you loans. Uh, this corporation is giving us a extremely fair deal for this whole area. So basically for all of my farm and some of the equipment they're going to give me. So the company is basically offering us $3.2 million, which is whew, a lot of money. Oh man, is that a lot of money. Don't know. Whew. And with the problems we're having with the banker here, uh, and everything I just oh man right now I am leaning towards just selling and starting over I mean I could start over with another farm I could really start with my uh, my feet on the ground I still have a big loan for this farm which will basically be paid off and I can sell the grain the all my grain from last year and my cattle that I've fattened up that are ready for market I can sell all of that uh, it's a little bit trickier the deal the company does want some of the equipment but not all the equipment so we're going to have to figure out what we want man these type things you just gotta sleep and then uh, come up with a plan the next day oh man I can't sleep this is Weighing on my chest. This is, oh man, I don't know what to do. Oh man, I'm gonna watch TV a little bit. Wait, what is this? Because Nick knows. We produce more than what we can use in this country and uh, exports are how we uh, handle the market. And declining demand from China. Since the man. trade disputes started, U.S. farm exports this to China have had problem. from about $20 billion during the pre-trade war years. I feel bad for these farmers. All right, so, uh, Gina, are you okay? You look a little solid there. You sleep very weird, Gina. Have you ever seen a dog sleeping standing up? That's Gina right there. I slept on it. I really decided it's not worth struggling here in Nebraska. I'm going to pull the button. I'm going to basically take their offer and sell the farm. Ooh, ooh, wow. So, what we need to decide to do is what equipment around here we are going to uh, take across state lines. So, I was talking to Squad, and he says he's really interested in some land in Wisconsin, Iowa area. So, man. Uh... It would be kind of nice to move back to Iowa. I just think the ground is a little bit more rich than this area, but it was nice here living in Nebraska, but man, I just can't get over how flat it is. I mean, I mean, look at that. My, them buildings are over three quarters of a mile away and they are just, it's completely flat. You could basically flood irrigate if you want in this whole valley. You can't see a single building, like way off there in the distance you can see a little building. And that's probably 10 miles away. Uh, you could see bucks over there. I mean, it's just crazy how flat this is. I'm not going to miss how flat this land is. I mean, yeah, it was nice land, huge pieces of land, but I think it's just too big for us. I mean... I, we don't have a lot of help. Uh, Timmy, he was helping us out. But Timmy, you know, he we struggled with Timmy. I mean, t 
Timmy was really hard to deal with most of the time, so... I mean, that's one benefit. We get a move away from Timmy. Hopefully we find another good hired hand that can help us out, but... Whew, man, I mean... I really... The one thing I'm going to miss is this farmyard. I mean, in my opinion, this is my favorite farmyard. I mean, this place is just immaculate. I just have it laid out just correct. And maybe I'm a little biased there, but I, I just really like how the layout and everything, how it all runs together. Only trouble is, I, I got to figure out which pieces of equipment. So the company, they want to keep uh, two-thirds of my equipment. So basically, one-third of all the stuff I own, I can take. But it can't go over a certain price. And I'm not for sure that price range. So, uh, a little bit leery. So, mm, man, what am I going to... All right, so... Big thing is the harvester. Okay. I really like this harvester, but I just think it's smart to probably keep this and sell it to Buck just for some extra money. I think it's too much. One, we have to pull it across state lines. Don't not really looking forward to that. Mm, man. Yeah, I think I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna keep this, I'm gonna keep this harvester and basically, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to get a deal through, uh, Buck, see if I can get this sold at the dealership. Man, I am going to miss it. this. I thought I got a great deal on this harvester and, I mean, this is our newest harvester in a long while and now we gotta get rid of it already. Uh, the sprayer, it's gone. I mean, we could hire spraying if we need to, so it's not going to be a necessity to pull across state lines. And two, it has some, uh, it's got a lot of issues need fixed. I don't know if it's a, enough money to uh, keep this piece of equipment and sell it to Buck. I mean, it is, what, I think this is... 10 years old already so I don't know maybe well I'm gonna have to figure out I'm gonna have to do a lot of financing so the cat bulldozer here uh, yeah no I mean it's not worth enough for I think I'm just gonna end up giving that away it's not definitely not worth carrying that heavy thing across state lines that's not gonna happen on draper heads. I'm not going to pull them across state lines, I can tell you that right now. I think, I mean, draper heads are pretty good. I mean, these things are not cheap. You'd be amazed how much money is in these two draper heads. Try to sell these to Buckaroo. Do we want to keep our gleaner or not? Don't know if I really want to pull this across state line. I mean, this thing is nice. I might Oh man, I, I don't know. Maybe I'll just buy another, find another gleaner and sell it here and probably... So maybe this is one of the pieces of equipment we'll keep here. Uh, yeah. I think that because of the price and everything, the corn head maybe, I don't know. I got to do a lot of figuring, so this is really hard to deal with right now so another thing basically our repair truck gonna keep it here just not worth enough money for us to pay to move it or deal with you know keeping it so Ooh. now this one's a tough choice the 8230 yep I think I'm gonna get rid of it for primary reason is I think it's a little bit small so if I was going to keep this 8230, I'd, I'd want it like an 84 or at least an 8330. Oh, it'd be nice if it was 85. Just for, I would, I would need a tillage tractor and that's what I'd want. 
So this is older than 10 years now, so I don't know if that's... So our brand new 4960. Hmm. Man, I wish I wouldn't have done this deal now. The good thing is I could keep this at the farm. Not have to... And it could be part of our two-thirds of our equipment. It's just not going to get us the money or we're pulling across state lines, I don't think. So, I mean, really, I think we should do this smart and basically keep the equipment to the corporation. So, basically, the corporation wants to pay somebody to farm this. A lot of wealthy uh, corporations and all that do that primarily to hide their taxes. The interrogator, yeah gonna get rid of that I could always just have some a hired done tether yep keeping or keeping here at the farm I should say Ooh. now this grain cart now that's gonna be a hard choice oh man I'm gonna have to think about this all right our spreader here probably didn't use enough and it was in a wreck yeah it's gotta go our planter don't know if I'm gonna get that big where I'm gonna need a DV60 so thinking so this planter does have a lot of the technology I want to get into planting like downforce and uh, electric drive so this planter isn't like the expensive planters can be like you know they can vary they can almost double triple in price once you get all that technology on there so yeah I think I'm gonna keep that here. Alice Chalmers would be hard to get rid of. Year-round cab. Man. I don't know if I really want to get rid of that. And uh, disc spine, I don't think is worth pulling. So we got our Vermeer Baylor here. 605M. There's so many choices. I don't know what to do, to be honest. So the Steiger here. Holy cow, do I need a paint job on this Steiger. Wow. What the heck happened? Hail on it or something? Looks like our Steiger was in a hail damage, but... So, I'm going to keep this as one-third, and I'm going to sell it, basically. So, that is the plan, because it's too valuable white workhorse I mean it's great and all that but we didn't have enough uses for it to uh, pay to pull it across state lines so yep that's that's gonna be kept here same with our Silverado we never got to it yep we'll keep it to be honest I think I should get my trucks out here and just kind of basically pull them out so I think I'm gonna get man I don't know what I like this load stars but I just don't think it's up for the task of pulling across state lines like really don't think that is it can do that amount of distance really don't know if this truck is up for the task of pulling across state lines either Peterbilt, so it's got a lot of high mileage on it, so man it's a tough call I think it'd be smart if we're gonna pull across state lines like that if I uh, purchase a different semi I think I'm gonna go trade this in, truck in see what I can get upgrade this truck so we can get a better pulling rig all right, so probably wasn't really the smartest thing to do, but uh, I ended up upgrading my Peterbilt. I took a huge loss on it, but I I just think this is smarter to drive across state lines than my old uh, Peterbilt. So this is a 389, so I think this one, so that other one was getting close to uh, uh, 600 thousand miles on it which I know is just breaking in but how old it was and how neglected the last owner wasn't nice to it so I ended up going with this one this one only has I got this it's only a few years old it's like four years old 
2016. So yeah, four years old, and it only has 200,000 on it, which we did end up leasing this Ford 9000. Don't know if I'll push a button on this just because I'm going to have a lot of expenses moving. So I just leased this to help move some of my equipment across state lines. I've been trying to figure out what to do with the 8400R. I mean, I just use it all the time. Just, uh, just don't know what to do with it. I obviously it's going. It's one of the most expensive pieces of equipment, so it's definitely either going to be sold or taken. I think. Oh man. You know what? We're going to take it, and if finances get a little bit too tough over there, we can always sell it. These things are valuable no matter where you go, so yeah. We're going to take the 84. Well, one thing I know is going to go, just because I need to have this Minneapolis Moline. I'm, this thing is so reliable. I'm just going to take it. Don't even care. Nope even care what's the smartest I'm just gonna take what I want now and figure out later the it's just not worth it I'm trying to figure out and trying and I have to purchase new found this already so I'm just gonna take this think it's smart an old trusty reliable don't even have to worry about this thing it's always starting all right now we got to figure out what else to put on these trailers so I'm gonna go get my 8400R and get that on the planner and get that hooked up. All right, so we're gonna take these duels off of this thing, so just so it's easier going down the state line. I think it's smart to take the duels off. Get these off to find my impact gun. Start up, make sure my air compressor is filled up with air. All right, we should be good to go. All right, all the duels are off, so now we need to get this onto the trailer. So I was basically contemplating, I don't really want to take our 1990 just because I have to deal with that Y thing all the way across state lines. So I think it's smarter just to just keep it here. All right, I'm gonna have to uh, raise this up so I can fold the back basically ramp up. All right, I think that truck is loaded down. Whew, that's a little bit of squat on them tires. Ah, uh, man, that's why we didn't take the Dodge because we are gonna pull all of that. Ooh, I wasn't expecting to really load that down, but good thing is we got most of the weight on the back axles. The Minneapolis Moline will hold down the front and the hitch. Really got to make up our mind here. What are we going to end up taking? Thought about it. Contemplated. I'm going to take the gleaner. I'm just going to suck it up. It's just worked for us so well. It's got a folding head so we could take this corn head. Just everything would be nice and easy. So we're just going to... I'm just gonna take it go good thing about this is it's almost made to like be able to go down the road so we're gonna fold in that uh, extension that bend extension so that won't be up while we're driving down the road but I was thinking about this I think yeah we're just gonna because this is so narrow and that way we can have a planner we don't have to worry about purchasing a planner right away we're just gonna pull this. We might end up selling the planter right away. I don't know, but yeah, we're just gonna take the John Deere. All right, so now we need to take the duels off of this tractor so we can transport it easier. All right, We've got the duels off. Put back up to our teeny planter. That's a good thing about this planter, man. And look, look how narrow it is. It's 
one good thing about it. So I'm just filling up this last load here. So I'm taking this last load to the co-op. Basically, I'm trying to sell all of my grain. And wow, is it ever late. Trying to get this done so I can leave tomorrow. Ooh, man. Uh, so much to do and so little time. But So this is my last load. I'm going to haul this over to the co-op. And then I am going to turn in for the day and leave tomorrow morning. So we're falling a little bit behind here. But, uh, man, this place looks so familiar. It's like we got a John Deere dealership over there. Man. This Jake brake on this thing is so loud. Been driving across state lines. Wow, this thing is like in your ear loud all the time. Probably going. Ooh, I got my Jake brake on in the middle of city. Ooh, man. Better hurry up before the police catch us. Oh, man, we're going across the Mississippi River here. like old truck stop there on the side of the road. The way he's doing. What a beautiful bridge this is. Welcome to Wisconsin. Hello, Wisconsin. Hey. So there's my other crew. So they stopped at Casey's to fill up with gas. So we are just about to our farmyard so just gonna pull in right here but thank y'all for watching and i will see you later where i don't know i'm gonna go get me some homemade pizza yum thank you all for watching like comment and share and subscribe